let's go all right a warm welcome to you on our so our social tables thank hello you so much. yeah hello everyone i am kalpana choudhary founder of social tables managing trustee and chairperson of janseva foundation being the change and lagna.com lagna.com is a matrimony portal for differently abled asset attack survivors and cancer survivors i am also an active member of fiki flow cii iwn maharashtra women economic forum and tedx speaker before diving into the guest introduction i would like to take a moment to introduce you with social tables social tables is committed to sustainable development program with societal well being and environmental consciousness every week we bring out to you some of the brightest minds from the diverse sector to discuss over a few significant ongoing issues in this week's in this week's speaker series we have a guest mr chaitanya chinchil Chin Shlikar, and he is vice president and business head, Wizlingwood International. Born, born, brought up, and educated in Mumbai, Chaitanya Ji has had a multi-faceted career in film and media education, event management, chartered accountancy, and business advisory, with some time spent in amateur journalism as well. Starting off in the marketing team of Wizlingwood International, he was a key member of the team that launched the school and has since grown with the organization. So, to Vice President, Business Development, Chief Technology Officer of Wizlingwood International, and Vice President, Strategy of Mukta Arts Limited. Over the past decade at Wizlingwood, he has undertaken several path-breaking efforts to revol revolutionize and mainstream film and media education through technology-based evang evangelized of film and media education that has included partnership with several global M&E giants like Sony, Google, Apple, Adobe, Fraunhofer, Red Cameras, and many more to set up R&D education industry co-working partnership. The latest technology has the latest technology-based evangelization of film and media education is setting up of film is setting up of the Whistling Woods Geo Virtual Reality Lab. This is India's first industry academia partnership-based VR lab and is focused on cinematic VR fiction narrative content in 360 VR. The lab is well on its way to create India's first generation of cinematic VR filmmakers by 2020 to 21. He has also been instrumental in the partnership between Whistling Woods International and Tata Institution of Social Science, which has brought about mainstreaming of film and media education in India by launching India's first undergraduate ap applied arts degree program in filmmaking, acting, and, and music. Over the past decade, he has also acquired a deep understanding of the media and entertainment industry in the areas of education, film, TV, animation, and digital media, including writing several papers and analytical presentation on the same. He is an active speaker at seminars and conferences on multiple topics related to education and film, media, and entertainment industry. A very warm welcome to you on our today's speaker series, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's an utmost pleasure to have you here with us today. So in today's discussion, we are going to discuss about understanding film entertainment and film education. So let's begin the session. Chaitanya ji, has the shutdown of the theatres because of lockdown been the biggest impact on the entertainment industry in this year? Um, so, you know, while the theatres being shut down has impacted the media and, entertainment, in media and entertainment industry significantly, but I wouldn't say it has been the biggest impact so far. A much bigger impact than the theatre shutting down has actually been the shutting down of production. See, you have to understand theatres is, is the key element of the film industry. The film industry is about... 10-12% of the Indian media and entertainment industry. And, you know, domestic theatres is about 60-65% of that. Mm. So, dekha jai ke, dekha jai to, the theatres are only about 6-7% of the overall media and entertainment industry of the country. 
what is much more uh, impactful is the fact that production is stopped that we can't shoot anything we can't make any new content because there are multiple avenues for content to be shown the mm. content can be played back on television on ott on uh, you know on youtube on various other digital and broadcast platforms so that is actually a much bigger impact than the cinema shutting down mm. uh, so yeah i mean we while we hope that uh, cinemas open up uh, soon because you know it is uh, the Uh, one of the most entertaining and the most uh, overt uh, um, displays of the entertainment industry that people see and people kind of experience on a daily basis but we are very happy that shoots have commenced and you know in the past month or so uh, quite a few shoots have started and we are starting to see a lot more content get created so yeah absolutely it would have been so tough for artists and other people in the industry yeah because uh, you know it's also important because you know if you if you don't create content on a regular basis then you have nothing to show on television and other platforms absolutely despite being a 100 year film industry why have we not been able to become a global presence as far as our content being consumed by non indians so um you know firstly you're right that uh, you know most of our content is actually not consumed by non indians um about 70% of hollywood's money comes from outside the us mm. only uh, 15% of our money comes from outside india mm. so that's actually not a good thing it's better that our films are seen by more and more and more people globally so uh, you know the 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 big outreach and the big uh, you know uh, ex- expansion of our content that should have happened has not happened yet even though indian films open in many many countries they are still largely seen only by the indian diaspora because indians are everywhere indian films are seen everywhere now there is a reason why um, you know in addition to uh, not being a global powerhouse where a lot of non indians are seeing indian films in addition other than that a lot of outsiders are also not coming to india to study film education hmm. you will see any country that is a global superpower in a particular industry is also a superpower in the indu- in the education of that industry mm-hmm. so for example um, you know germany is a great engineering uh, marvel and innovation uh, innovative country they have quite a few engineering world class engineering schools um the us has uh, you know is a global superpower in uh, media and entertainment and they have some of the best film schools some of the best media schools uh france and italy are you know really really well known global in fashion and design and they have some of the world's best fashion schools right and uh, like design institutes mm-hmm. india is a 108 year old now film industry Okay. despite that we are not a global powerhouse in um, uh, in film education and mm-hmm. you know there is a reason for that is it's a, essentially because film education in india has never been mainstream mm-hmm. education in india is kind of handled by uh, two separate uh, it's a, it's in kind of two separate blocks one is what is handled by the mhrd the ministry of human resource development which will soon be called ministry of education now after the new education policy um so that handle you know that manages all the degrees and all the technical education and then there is a bunch of education that is managed by respective ministries yes so chartered accountancy is managed by the finance ministry law education is managed by the law ministry uh health medical education is managed by the health ministry similarly media and entertainment industry is managed by the information and broadcasting ministry mm. now all these other three ministries that i spoke about right health uh, finance as well as law they have all set up academic governing bodies they have mm. all created an academic framework mm-hmm. so for law for example you have llb then you have internship you have llm you have internship mm. for medical education which is you know used to be managed by the mci now by the nmc you have mbbs then you have an internship you have md ms there is a framework there is a structure mm-hmm. which can be followed by both 
private institutions and government institutions mm-hmm. in the case of media and entertainment even though it is governed by the inb ministry mm-hmm. there is no framework set up there is no academic governance body mm-hmm. right so essentially what the government did at some point of time was set up a bunch of autonomous institutions mm-hmm. and that's it so okay. they set up the fti pune the srfti calcutta the jj school of arts the nid imc you know a, a few of these uh, you know kind of institutes scattered around but there is no overall overarching framework or overarching uh, governance body mm. for media and entertainment education in india mm. so if a private player or somebody wanted to set up a a film school or a management a media school or a journalism advertising animation there was no framework for them to follow mm. so they would either have to go and kind of take their specialized education mm-hmm. and try and fit it into the straight jacket of ugc aict mm-hmm. or they would have had to you know dilute it down and make it uh, diplomas because you know they couldn't even offer degrees absolutely so you know, there was so much uh, lack of clarity and lack of structure in media and entertainment education in india mm-hmm. and what happens because of that is you don't have the mainstreaming of media and entertainment education mm. because it is not mainstream the quality the overall quality of mne education doesn't develop as right? you don't have uh, uh, you know you don't become a powerhouse in that field in that industry uh, neither do uh, domestic students find a natural avenue from you know school to you know 12th ke baad ke acha you know jaise you have standard uh, kind of mainstream careers engineering medicine law journalism etc 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 you don't have one for the creative arts or film and creative arts and it is right? the need of the r in fact everybody yeah. is coming to bombay and getting settled exactly somebody has nothing and yet they are here in bombay and they just want to do it correct so you know we are uh, almost uh, 20% of the um, Uh, you know we are less than a little less than 20% of the world's population mm. uh, but we are less than 2% of the world's media and entertainment industry oh my god right so there is a there is this needs to be fixed and this kind of needs to be solved and the more you solve it the more you have um, mainstreaming of film and creative arts education it opens up the world to your content because you able to create higher quality content you are able to you become the 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 industry becomes the sharp end of the stick you know to break through international markets with your brands and culture mm-hmm. jaise mcdonalds ho ya dunkin donuts ho ya kfc ho mm-hmm. american jo culture hai mm-hmm. wo india mein ya dusre countries mein why is it so popular it is popular because their films and their tv shows and their uh, you know digital content has made it popular in our country mm-hmm. similarly very little of indian culture is actually popular all over the world mm-hmm. right so mcdonalds is you know our is their version of Indi- of fast food is their version of our vada pav or you know some other mm-hmm. fast food that we have but we haven't been able to make our brands cool Mm-hmm. and it took so many it took so many 100 years for yoga to be recognized globally as india's contribution to the world absolutely took, you know it took a big effort by the by the head of state to to push it mm-hmm. but you know there are still so much of indian culture which is not being able to push out uh, push out there because mm-hmm. we don't make high quality compelling content Mm. which packages our culture in order to uh, you know propagate it to the world so mm. you know there are many of these uh, issues that are caused by the fact that you don't have a robust mm. you know nice well bodied uh, mm. fully functioning media creative arts film and education in those areas mm. absolutely very well said and i think we need to broaden our horizon a little more and try a little harder and uh, having said that uh, we don't have this academy thing in media in terms of the film education have Correct. you also had any kind of dialogues with the ministry 
on sale? So yes, uh, actually one of the reasons why uh, Whistling Woods was set up also by uh, Subhaji, by Mr. Ghai, was that, uh, you know, he's been, uh, over the last 40 years or so, he's, you know, and the many, many films that he's made and all the success he's achieved, he's also launched a lot of new people, mm. you know, new actors, new uh, technicians, new cameramen, new choreographers, etc., etc. And he's had a, a keen hand in grooming and training all of them. So he's consistently been noticing the lack of a high-quality um, mainstreamed uh, media and entertainment education institute in the country, uh, you know, which is one of the reasons uh, for uh, setting up of Whistling Woods that, you know, we have been, the goal of it was to create the next generation of uh, Indian film and creative arts professionals. So essentially what, what, we, what we've done is we've taken the way that film should be shot, should be taught and we have not tried to change it in order to fit it into the straight jacket of the UGC or the AICTE. So we started off as, uh, as diploma programs uh, uh, 14 years ago. My question was, uh, my question was, did you have a dialogue with the government? Yeah, so I'm, I'm coming to it, right? So we started off about 14 years ago. Uh, and at that point of time, uh, we decided not to interact with the with the government because we didn't fall under AICT, we, we didn't have a UGC control. So we decided to do our own diplomas and, you know, in about four years from then, so 2010 is when we got rated as one of the 10 best film schools in the world. Uh, you know, we saw that our alumni are doing really, really well in the industry, uh, they, you know, they're entering the industry seamlessly from institution to the industry. And that's when we decided that to, to take it to the next level and to start to explore offering undergrad, mainstream undergrad education in filmmaking, which is an applied arts program. Mm. Um, and that's when we started engaging with multiple universities who we could speak to, who would uh, understand the way that we are teaching film mm. and would understand how film needs to be taught. Mm -hmm. and would understand that what we are doing is real education. It's not, you know, it's not, uh, um, it, it's, it, it is actually real hardcore mainstream education and training. Mm -hmm. And in that, we found a partner with the Tata Institute of Social Sciences and we signed the agreement uh, about six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and through that, we have been able to mainstream film and media education, right? So we have interacted with the government on multiple levels on at multiple times. Mm -hmm. uh, we were inaugurated by the Information and Broadcasting Minister of India. Mm -hmm. Shri Priya Ranjan Das Munsi inaugurated Whistling Woods. Mm -hmm. uh, our, key, our keynote speaker for our first convocation was the Pro Vice Chancellor of Mumbai University. Wow. So we have always wanted to and in, wanted to work with the the government officials in order to ensure that uh, you know we are we are we are re what we are doing we are able to take out to the world mm -hmm. so uh, about uh, 7 or 8 years ago we were asked to write the curriculum mm -hmm. for the 11th and 12th grade for the cbse board mm -hmm. in media studies because you know CBN, cbse wanted to offer it as an academic elective so we wrote the curriculum oh right we've written the curriculum for the cbse board for media studies uh, Few years ago, then about uh, five years ago, uh, we had, uh, you know, once we had, once we had the framework structure for our undergrad program settled and well oiled, along with this, mm -hmm. um, I personally wrote a position paper, um, a paper on the the need of mainstreaming of uh, film and media education, and we sent it out to the IMB ministry and the MHRD and so on and so forth, and. Uh, you know, it took some time for, you know, it to kind of find its way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, now it is, it has now reached a stage where the government is looking at, uh, you know, is looking at how do I mainstream this? Mm -hmm. And if you notice the changes that they have made in the national education policy, mm -hmm. which came out a couple of days ago, yes. reflect the fact that there are no hard locked silos on ke aapko science mein yahi karna hai, aapko arts mein yahi karna hai. There is a, a choice-based credit system. There is trans uh, multidisciplinary approach. 
so you can choose maths also you can choose creative writing also you know somebody can choose art also and they can choose physics also so you know this multidisciplinary approach at the high school level and at the undergrad level will create the well rounded personality that's needed mm-hmm. for them to pursue a film and creative arts education right mm-hmm. and now that they are uh, kind of you know ugc aict is all merged into one accreditation body and mm-hmm. the traditional um, you know kind of straight jacket of these organizations will be uh, relaxed in order to make way for you know a good well rounded education yes. we are very hopeful that under this new framework you will have multiple uh, you know film and media schools that will open up in the country because you know the india needs them absolutely very well said uh, and so, you know if you uh, if you do, if you do a comparison with the us oh. uh, india has a population of 1.35 billion Mm. us is about uh, you know 330 million um they have approximately 150 to 160 uh, film programs they graduate about 15000 film and creative arts professionals every year that's huge we graduate less we graduate less than 400 or 500 of them why is that gap because we don't have enough high quality film and media schools okay right so we are employing approximately 8 9 lakh people in the media and entertainment industry us is also employing approximately 9 10 lakh people in the media and entertainment industry <laughs> they have almost 10 to 15000 fresh blood coming into the industry every year which mm. is improving the quality which is kind of you know refreshing the industry mm. we don't have that much fresh blood coming in we have barely 400 500 people and mm. out of them 300 people are graduating from whistling woods so before that you know there were even fewer mm. so you know this um uh, expansion much needed expansion of film and creative arts education in india mm. is absolutely necessary and you know hopefully now over the next few years we will start to see it happen wow very insightful so why in your opinion did mr subhash gai think of setting up a film and creative art institute what was the key vision behind setting up whistling wood international So I mean I have been with them now for 14 plus years so I have had uh, multiple opportunities to experience the vision on a closely on a close uh, basis but it's essentially been what I spoke about it's been about um, enabling India to have really really high quality world class cutting edge institute which caters to the three core areas that an institute should cater to mm-hmm. right it should cater to edu- uh, to uh, entrepreneurship it should cater to employment and it should cater to research mm-hmm. these are the three areas core areas that any educational institution should cater to and we needed one that would do all these three for the film and creative arts industry mm-hmm. so we started off with film Uh, as our core focus and then we uh, started to diversify into the other areas so we started with film um, then we added animation then we added uh, school of media and communication so advertising journalism events etc then we uh, moved into um, uh, a fashion then we added a music school then we added a design program so you know we are now covering you know multiple areas of the four key buckets of uh, creative you know film and creative arts education so there's film making there's media and communication there's creative arts and performing arts mm-hmm. and you know as we grow we will continue to add both quality as well as quantity in these areas now essentially the 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 big advantage of having all these under one umbrella is that it allows for foundational education to be to be delivered to all the students and it allows students of multiple verticals to interact with each other mm-hmm. so our fashion students don't just make fashion clothes for the ramp and you know for to as in fashion retail they also do fashion films they also do the costumes for our film making students mm-hmm. our music our music students also do the background scores for the films right cinematography students shoot music videos on the music that the music students make the animation students also learn things like virtual 
uh, production and virtual filmmaking, which where they interact with the filmmaking students. The visual effects students understand their value and how to mount a large VFX heavy film. Now, un until and unless you have a large organization with a large umbrella framework, mm -hmm. getting this interactivity going is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why, uh, you know, Suvaji decided to have such a larger vision and not just ke haan, ek chota sa film school khulte hain, was in order to give the, you know, the, the country and kind of future generations this large umbrella uh, education. Wow, the, that's something I didn't know most of the points what you had addressed over here and uh, incredible work what Subhash guy is doing it and this was the need of the art because people didn't know where to go, how to start, where um, how to go about basically. So you have Islinghood and you have the operational team to explain everything and you can join there, right? Right. All right. So what do you think needs to change in our education structure to make it ready for 21st century? So if you, um, you know, uh, in order to answer that, I'm going to, we're going to have to kind of take half a step back to see education ki shuruat kahan se hui, right? Where did education start from? Mm. So, you know, education essentially started in the, like the first wave of education was when you had the Gurukuls of India and the academies of Greece. And, you know, there were similar structures in China and Egypt and other areas, right? Mm. Where you had a, uh, a few students that went uh, to uh, went and studied in a particular location. There were multiple teachers. Each student uh, had uh, uh, learned everything. Each student learned art also and drama also and combat and warfare also and economics also, politics also, mathematics also. They were taught by subject matter experts, right? In the Gurukul. So there was general education and there was specialized education. Each student chose a particular weapon that he or she specialized in, right? Some students were really good at politics. Some students were really good at governance. Some students were really good at warfare. Some students were really good at art. And, you know, this uh, was high quality, personalized, customized education. Mm. The problem was that it was, it was fundamentally unscalable. You could not do this for a large number of people. You could just do it for a smaller number of people, right? Also, there was almost little or no use of technology. There was maybe a little manuscript. There were a few manuscripts here and there, but there wasn't large technology because, you know, it was back or beyond. There was no tech, major technology around. Then you had the first wave of industry where, uh, you know, uh, mechanical devices started to be used by humans in order to make their lives and tasks and production easier. Yeah. So that caused the first wave of education mm. where education moved from, uh, uh, you know, from the, the Gurukul system to the, what you call an assembly line model, right? Mm. Uh, where there was a one to many broadcast where one teacher stood and broadcast uh, his or her uh, teaching to everybody. It was uh, standardized. There was no customization for each student uh, because memory and information retention was very, very important because you needed people to know, remember quite a lot, right? Because of that, memory recall, right? And taking in information and remembering it was very, very important. And you had annual and biannual testing. For it, कि आपको कितना याद है, आप कितना समझे हो, and अगर आपको बहुत याद है और आप बहुत समझे हो, तो you are educated, हाँ. right? So that happened for many many years, and but you know there was no customization, there was no standardization, uh, there was no um, um, a personalization. Everything was standard. Mm -hmm. Everybody learned the same thing and were taught the same thing, mm -hmm. right? There was hard, there was little or no. Uh, an emphasis on analysis and problem solving. It was all about memory, 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 rote learning. Right? And then you had the second wave of industry where, um, you know, a lot of uh, automation came in and mechanics came in and um, uh, a lot of humans started to be replaced by machines or uh, the, the ratio of... You can stop. The ratio of machines to humans changed there are so many factories now where you have, say, 100 machines and only 10 humans to run them. 
right? Standard assembly line model of the car. Mm -hmm. And that's how education changed as well, right? Where you had a little bit more of problem solving, but largely it was still one to many broadcast kind mm -hmm. of thing, which is where we are essentially now. Mm -hmm. But today's world is actually quite different, right? Today's world may you really don't need to remember anything because almost all the information that you need is available to you at your fingertips. You know, a couple of taps and you know everything that you need to know. Right? You know, once upon a time, like 20 years ago, I would remember easily remember 200 phone numbers. I don't need to remember them now. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, so other than key concepts, uh -huh. theory, theorems, concepts, you really don't need to have memory of, uh -huh. of anything. Same uh -huh. thing with calculation. Right? Yeah. Very soon, your basic level analytical problem solving will also be taken care of by artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, um, you know, those kind of things. Like IBM Watson is there, which, you know, gives you solutions to low level, uh, basic level legal uh, problems pretty easily. Now, when you, when you look at this world that we are going into, if machines are going to do all this and artificial intelligence is going to resort, do all this problem solving, what are humans going to do, right? So if you see in the last 20 years, the effort needed for humans has moved away from all this towards the more creative areas towards critical thinking, strategic thinking, lateral thinking, design thinking, creative thinking, right? And that is how our education also structure also needs to change. We need to have more creative education. We need to stimulate the right brain of the students, right? Which is the creative side. Now, yes. creative education, if you look at it, see, people say that this is creative. Hai. Creative, hai matlab kya hai? creativity is not linked to any one particular profession. Uh -huh. I mean, you can paint in the most uncreative way possible. You can sing in the most uncreative way possible. But you can wipe the floor in the most creative way possible. You can yeah. clean the windows in the most creative way possible. Right? Yeah. Creativity is, a, is an aspect. It is a, it is a craft. It is a particular... Um, you know, it is, an, it is something that you bring, that you bring your, to the task that you are doing. It is a way of passion what is comes out. It is an approach. It is a way of thinking. Okay. So creative education is essentially a combination of strategic education, lateral education, design education, and critical thinking. Very well said. If, if you are able to take these four areas and start to teach it at various levels to students in their formative years, so starting from say grade fourth grade or the fifth grade onwards then what you are doing is by the time the student finishes 12th standard or graduation, you are creating a well-rounded personality. Mm. You are creating somebody who is, uh, even if he or she is a maths major or a physics major, still has the ability to apply mathematics and physics creatively mm. right? or critically or strategically or is able to think laterally. Mm. That is what is needed to be taught. And that is why I am so happy that a lot of this is now being addressed under the new education policy. Mm -hmm. Right? Pehle jo sports hua karta tha, ya creative jo aap, uh, you know, singing, dancing, art hua karta tha, all that used to be extracurricular. Yes. Right? Oh, it used to be outside the academic. So parents, students, everyone would also treat it like, haan, thik hai, ye important nahi hai, ye side mein chal raha hai. So, you know, you won't give it focus. Now, because it is no longer extracurricular, it is all part of your education. Now, people will take it seriously. And people will, will realize at, at an early age that, you know what, I am actually a pretty creative person. I can be good at this. Mm -hmm. I can be good at different things. I can be good at cooking. I can be good at sports. I can be good at filmmaking, writing, documentary, you know, coding, for example. They're planning to start coding now in sixth grade. I think that's the best point that is introduced in this new education policy. Yes. Coding gives a, child, important. Uh, you know, gives a child strategic thinking. It allows their brain to expand and think in different manner. Right? So, these are the things that are essentially needed in order to take our education to the next um, century. And so, you know, there are two kind of key theorems that 
or you know concepts that i would that you know we try to teach our students right the first one is when you have forgotten what you studied for your exams what remains is your education hmm. right so aap exam ke liye ratta laga do chalega no problem jo jab aap जो आपने पढ़ा है जो आपने सीखा है जो आपने लर्न किया है जब आप वो भूल जाओगे जो बचता है वो आपका असली एजुकेशन है बिकॉज वो जिंदगी भर रहता है एंड द सेकेंड थिंग इज आर आई मीन एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन का क्या गोल होना चाहिए तो एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन नीड टू प्रिपेयर स्टूडेंट्स फॉर करियर दैट डू नॉट एग्जिस्ट टू यूज टेक्नोलॉजी दैट हैवेंट बीन इन्वेंटेड टू सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम दैट आर नॉट येट नोन Okay. In terms Because of the uh, so the way the world is growing, right? Uh-huh. The top ten, the top ten in demand careers of two thousand nineteen did not exist in two thousand five. It's not like they existed and they were not in the top ten. They didn't even exist. They are new careers. Mm-hmm. So imagine what the what the the landscape and the scenario will be twenty years from now or fifteen years from now. Absolutely. No, a student who joins in uh, the first standard today, fifteen, eighteen years from now, will pass twelfth standard. Mm-hmm. What careers will he, he or she be studying? We have no idea, right? There were so many careers that were not even thought of fifteen, eighteen years ago. Yes. So, how do we prepare students for an uncertainty that we don't know? and that is really the main challenge of educational institutions that the first thing you have to teach the student is how to learn because once they know how to learn then they can learn forever very well said very true i have high hopes with this new education policy as well it reinstates some belief in the system yeah i know i mean there was there's a lot of things that were good about it but yeah there are two three things that i was hoping that there would be jo nahi hai i would have liked uh, one sport and one creative art field to be made mandatory for every student from the fourth standard to the eighth standard okay. because kya hota hai na agar aap mandatory na karo to you know your parents and the baggage that they have they also tell the student acha theek hai nahi important nahi hai singing important nahi hai art important nahi hai for all you know aap wo bacche mein actual natural kala hogi aap mm-hmm. एक फ्यूचर एम एफ हुसैन को या फ्यूचर तैयब मेहता को आप दबा रहे होंगे क्योंकि अच्छा नहीं आर्ट इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है यू डोंट नो राइट सो इफ इट इज मेड कंपलसरी देन द स्टूडेंट विल बी यू नो काइंड ऑफ दे विल ट्राई द हैंड एट इट भले दे आर नॉट गुड एट इट भले दे आर ग्रेट एट इट राइट सो एक कोई स्पोर्ट और स्पोर्ट्स में ना क्या दूसरी चीजें भी आप सीखते हो आप स्पोर्ट में यू लर्न हाउ टू विन विद ग्रेस यू लर्न हाउ टू लूज विद ग्रेस यू लर्न टीम स्पिरिट you learn uh, how to play fair but tough so yeah. these are all things which are very important in that age bracket from uh, you know fourth standard to eighth standard because you know otherwise video games or itna dusra influence hota hai ki jo asli contact sport on ground you know mitti mein ya whatever mein wo sport bahut important hai so ye I'm... main chahta tha ki ho but theek hai maybe agle policy mein aayega But I think so, parents is far we kafi uh, aware uh, now because of so much of awareness. I think they are also pushing their children into the. Ah, uh, but abhi itna nahi hai jitna hona chahiye. Yes, because maybe in the rural, uh, if we go to talk about rural urban area, so wah pe nahi hai. So. Nahi, no, actually, ऐसे नहीं है. Rural urban split नहीं है. अगर आप देख लो, तो hmm. some of India's greatest sportsmen in the last twenty years hmm. have actually not come from the cities. other than one abhinav bindra who has okay. come from chandigarh if you look at all your major olympic winners or all your major sportsmen they have all come from villages and small towns oh yeah whether it is the fogart sisters whether it is uh, you know uh, 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 deepak karmakar from the northeast or whether it is duti chand whether it is dhoni uh, they have all come from small towns तो ये जो पहले जो यू नो सिटी और अर्बन और रूरल का डिवाइड था ना वो नहीं है एक्चुअली तो गांव के और छोटे शहरों के भी पेरेंट्स प्रोग्रेसिव है स्टूडेंट्स को अपॉर्चुनिटी नहीं मिलती है बिकॉज वो फ्रेमवर्क क्रिएट नहीं किया अगर आप मैंडेटरी स्पोर्ट्स एजुकेशन डालोगे तो जो बिलासपुर या जो रायपुर या जो मतलब मुजफ्फरपुर या कोई भी गाँव का जो बच्चा है वो फोर्सिबली फुटबॉल खेलेगा या क्रिकेट खेलेगा या चेस खेलेगा 
और या खेलेगी और क्या पता उसमें से यू you नो know, एक जिम्नास्ट निकले या एक नेक्स्ट विश्वनाथन आनंद निकले राइट right? सो so, वो जो एक की पार्ट है वो हफ्ते का एक घंटा है एक डेढ़ घंटा दो घंटा आपको डालना पड़ता है इन चीजों में तो इसमें ना बहुत इम्पैक्ट आएगा जो होपफुली आई एम होपिंग दैट वो यू नो नेक्स्ट जब चेंज आए या थोड़ा अपडेट हो एजुकेशन पॉलिसी तब ये स्पोर्ट्स और क्रिएटिव आर्ट्स मैंडेटरी हो जाए सिर्फ वो एज के सिर्फ फिफ्थ टू फिफ्थ टू एट वो वो चार सालों में वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बट अदरवाइज द एजुकेशन पॉलिसी आई एम क्वाइट हैप्पी विद इट yeah absolutely well so we keep hearing so much about the nepotism in the film industry we have voices on both the side what is your experience as an outsider and having seen so many student go through whistling woods and into the industry so um you know i mean i knew this question would come up because you know it's very topical right now Absolutely. so uh, honestly our my experience has been very very different uh, we have graduated about uh, almost 2 and 1/2 thousand students now in the last uh, 14 14 years 12 years of graduation batches mm. we have actually faced little or our students have actually faced little or no nepotism oh. see also you know i have been observing this as an outsider and now we 14 saal ho gaye to abhi main bhi insider hi ho gaya hu बोल सकते हैं सर अच्छा बट हमारी इंडस्ट्री क्लोज माइंडेड नहीं है वो बाहर वालों की बात सुनती है बिकॉज एट द एंड ऑफ इट द गोल ऑफ आवर इंडस्ट्री इज मैक्सिमाइजेशन ऑफ वैल्यू सो प्रॉफिट अच्छा हो अगर आप कहीं से भी आए हो आप अगर अच्छी पिक्चर बना सकते हो और आप जो प्रोड्यूसर है ऑडियंस है उनको खुश कर सकते हो आपको चांस अपॉर्चुनिटी मौका मिलेगा right people and you know i am i've been now observing this for the last uh, i think month and uh, maybe a more people are confusing two um, two aspects one is the aspect of nepotism jo hamari industry mein hai but hamari industry mein utna hi hai jitna banking mein hai ya medicine mein hai ya uh, academics mein hai ya law mein hai या फाइनेंस में है हर इंडस्ट्री में जितना नेपोटिज्म है उतना ही हमारे इंडस्ट्री में है उससे ना ज्यादा है ना कम है राइट ढाई हजार हमारे जो बच्चे ग्रेजुएट हुए हैं उसमें से मुश्किल से दस पंद्रह बीस जो है वो फिल्म फैमिली से बिलोंग करते हैं सो so, बाकी के तेईस सौ चौबीस सौ बच्चे हैं उनको सबको जॉब मिले हैं वो अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं और हाई लेवल पे कर रहे हैं डायरेक्टर है राइटर है एडिटर है हेड्स ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट है फिल्मों में टीवी में ओ में मराठी में कर रहे हैं तेलुगु में कर रहे हैं पंजाबी में कर रहे हैं गुजराती में कर रहे हैं तो अगर ये इंडस्ट्री इतनी क्लोज और नेपिटिस्टिक होती तो इतने बच्चों को इतना अपॉर्चुनिटी नहीं मिल सकता था राइट right? सो so, ये मैं नहीं मानता हूं कि बहुत सारा नेपिटिज्म है नहीं है जितना दुनिया में नॉर्मल होता है उतना ही है राइट right? जो दूसरा पॉइंट है जो लोग नेपिटिज्म के साथ कंफ्यूज कर रहे हैं वो ये ग्रुपिज्म है जो ग्रुप्स होते हैं ना कि ये मेरे ग्रुप में है तुम मेरे ग्रुप में हो ये हर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में होता है हर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में पॉलिटिक्स होता है कि एक कोई वाइस प्रेसिडेंट होता है उसके आजू बाजू चार मैनेजर होते हैं वो उनका ग्रुप बन जाता है दूसरा एक होता है उसके आजू बाजू चार बन जाते हैं उसका अलग ग्रुप होता है सो ये जो ग्रुपिज्म जो है वो हर इंडस्ट्री में है डॉक्टर्स में भी होता है एक से देर इज वन डॉक्टर फ्रॉम I don't know who's the head of department in of one thing in one hospital. He will have his four or five people who are next to him, and or she, and you know there'll be another doctor who you know another institution or another department in the same hospital. They will have their groupism, and they will try and kind of you know make one up over the other. The so people are confusing the two. Nepotism is not groupism, and groupism it's not nepotism. Yes, groupism is terrible. and it's really 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 bad and it it really has the potential of uh, negatively impacting individuals in the in the um, you know in the uh, ecosystem or in the industry aur ye nahi hona chahiye aur kyunki aap group hai aur aapke you know 10 ekdam high performing log hai ya whatever aap you know aap bahut clout rakhte ho that doesn't mean that you should Uh, uh, that you should uh, use 
this power that you have in order to negatively influence other people right mm-hmm. ye kahi bhi nahi hona chahiye ye medicine mein nahi hona chahiye law mein nahi hona chahiye hamare industry mein kahi education kahi bhi nahi hona chahiye mm-hmm. unfortunately ye natural human politics hai jo hota hai har industry mein hota hai hamari industry mein bhi hota hai mm-hmm. right हमारी इंडस्ट्री में उसको थोड़ा एम्पलीफाई होता है बिकॉज ग्लैमर है तो सब लोग देखते हैं तो बात होती है उसकी बट ये जो ग्रुपिज्म है जो क्लीक बोलते हैं यू नो दिस क्लीक बिजनेस इन एवरी सिंगल इंडस्ट्री इज इट अ गुड थिंग नॉट एट ऑल इट्स अ वेरी वेरी बैड थिंग राइट सो पीपल शुड कंफ्यूज वन विद दी अदर इफ दे वॉज सो मच नेपिटिज्म सो मेनी न्यू पीपल वुड नॉट हैव गॉट सो मच ऑपरचुनिटी राइट फिफ्टीन इयर्स अगो इतने नए बच्चे इतने नए लोग इंडस्ट्री में नहीं आते थे अब बहुत ज्यादा आते हैं अगर नेपोटिज्म होता तो नहीं होता था राइट इट वुड नॉट हैव बिकम लाइक दैट सो पीपल नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड सेपरेट दीज टू प्रॉब्लम बोथ आर प्रॉब्लम बट बोथ आर सेपरेट प्रॉब्लम दे नीड टू बी एड्रेस्ड एज एज सच सो आई मीन आई होप आई वॉज एबल टू एक्सप्लेन या 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 आई एम गेटिंग इट बट या आई टोटली अग्री विथ यू नेपोटिज्म हर फील्ड में होता है और फेवरेटिज्म तो होता है और पॉलिटिक्स भी बड़ी सारी होती है सो आई टोटली अग्री विथ यू या बिकॉज मे बी ग्लैमर है इसलिए ज्यादा बड़ा चढ़ा के उसको दिखाया जाता है और फिर यू नो हाउ न्यूज चैनल ब्रेकिंग न्यूज मिलनी चाहिए उसमें और मसाला डाल देते हैं हाँ बट आई मीन हमारी इंडस्ट्री में भी उतना थोड़ा क्योंकि क्या है ना इतने सालों से मीडिया के सामने आके you know they've come in front of the media so much uh-huh. that uh, they are used to saying anything and whatever right so sometimes it comes to bite you you know badly so maybe some of that as well i don't know i mean i'm i'm not on the front i'm not at the front of this so difficult for me to know sab log ka bas yahi hai bollywood mein bahut zyada hota hai bollywood mein bahut zyada hota hai par hota har kisi field mein in in this i'm on your side i second that yes but yeah jo cheez nahi honi chahiye लेकिन बट इट एग्जिस्ट आई डोंट नो कोई बेटा या बेटी है whether it is varun dhawan whether it is hrithik roshan whether it is ranbir whether it is you know any of the you know malia or uh, karishma karina they have all worked very very hard that doesn't mean that they didn't have an advantage of course they had an advantage because they are from the industry but it's like seeing it's like saying they had as much ad- advantage as being in the industry as actors and actresses as a doctor's child had whose father already has a hospital absolutely right he or she needs to work a little less harder because they have a business waiting for them when they finish their medical college you know whatever they have to study and they also, can walk into a job absolutely and also they have been trained they have been seen in the film i mean firstly they are already in the film family to wo log shuru se train ho jate hain makeup kaise karna hai hair kaise karna hai how to present your media stuff or assistant director rithik roshan has been an assistant director with his father on koila varun dhawan has been an assistant director with his father on on many films wo log seekhe hain to problem kya hai na media bhi kabhi kabhi pura likhti nahi hai yes right they only show the jo unko suit hota hai wo dikhta hai so aise bahut sare star kids hai jinke careers nahi chale hai ha ha right so and uh, it's not that see cricket or sports mein aapko camera ke samne ya you know cricket mein ya koi bhi field mein aapko field pe आपके जो फैमिली मेंबर्स है उनके बदौलत आप पहुंच सकते हो पर एक बार आप कैमरा के सामने जाओ या एक बार आप फील्ड पे जाओ आपको परफॉर्म करना ही पड़ेगा बिकॉज अदरवाइज देर इज नो सोल्यूशन नो बडी एल्स कैन कम एंड एक्ट ऑन योर बिहाफ और नो बडी एल्स कैन कम एंड प्ले क्रिकेट ऑन योर बिहाफ और बॉल और बैट ऑन योर बिहाफ दैट यू हैव टू डू योर सेल्फ सो इट इज अ हाईली मेरेटोक्रेटिक इंडस्ट्री टोटली अग्री विथ यू योर परफॉर्मेंस स्पीक्स अलॉट so uh, what are the influence you see of new and emerging technologies on the indian film entertainment industry oh uh, actually 
क्वाइट अ फ्यू अभी लॉकडाउन में एक्चुअली काफी यू नो वी हैव स्टार्टेड टू सी मेनी जो टेक्नोलॉजीज व्हिच वर स्लोली 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 प्रोग्रेसिंग आर नाउ प्रोग्रेसिंग फास्ट सो वर्चुअल रियलिटी यू आर सीइंग अ लॉट ऑफ कॉन्सर्ट्स एंड परफॉर्मेंसेस दैट आर हैपनिंग इन इन वीआर स्पोर्ट्स फुटबॉल वगैरह अभी वीआर में दिखा रहे हैं इन इन वेरियस पार्ट्स ऑफ यूरोप um uh, you can so you know the nayi jo new technology hoti hai wo every literally every day change hoti hai every day there is something new coming in mm-hmm. and it is how well your industry adapts to these new technologies yes at ek time pe hum film pe shoot karte the aur theater mein jaake dekhte the yes. ab hum digital mein shoot karte hai hum picture theater pe dekh sakte hai tv pe dekh sakte hai laptop pe dekh sakte hai mobile pe dekh sakte hai right it up uh, up very soon you will be able to have uh, you know a vr headset pen ke vr mein you can consume content live as well as uh, you know not live uh, recorded and uh, you know fiction content so pehle agar aap koi agar aapko kisi ka interview karna hai to unko studio mein aapko sabko bulana padta tha ab studio mein nahi bulana padta hai one person can be sitting on a beach somewhere and you know there are two people sitting in the studio and they are interviewing the person and on the screen it looks like they're sitting next to each other Absolutely. right audience to even even if there is no audience in the studio it still feels like there is an audience in the studio okay. so okay. you know virtual filmmaking virtual cinematography um jo gaming engines ko platform bana ke sara jo content create hota hai jaise humne ready player one dekha ya matrix dekha um matrix ko to kafi saal ho gaye uh lion king jungle book a lot of these animated mandalorian jo bhi uh, um uh lucas films uh disney ne banaya so ye jo all these all this content and the the foundational base of this are the five six new and emerging media technologies that are out there virtual reality hai augmented reality hai आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस है मशीन लर्निंग है ब्लॉक चेन है ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर आई मीन दे आर हियर नाउ सो आर इंडस्ट्री विल चेंज सिग्निफिकेंटली ओवर द नेक्स्ट टेन इयर्स आई थिंक नाउ डिजिटल इज द न्यू गेमिंग या आई मीन गेमिंग देख लो आप यू नो ऐसे धीरे धीरे क्वाइटली गेमिंग हैज यू नो बिकम ह्यूज दुनिया इफ यू लुक ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड the gaming industry is larger than the film industry and the music industry put together ab duniya bhar ki film aur music industry ko mila do gaming usse bada hai oh this is something i didn't know yes in india one in every four people is a gamer oh mobile pe aap hyper casual game khelte ho candy crush ya dusre wo bhi gaming hai wo bhi multi million dollar industry hai okay right? candy crush gaming ke- there are multiple types of gaming there is what is called hyper casual games there are platform 2d games there are 3d games there are pc games you know jo computer pe khelte hain there is a uh, console gaming jo playstation ya v ya uh, um uh, uh, kinect wagera pe hota hai then there is something called uh, mmorpg massive multiplayer online role playing games jisme fortnite aata hai pubg aata hai league of legends aata hai baaki sare kafi kuch games aate hain those are actually now classified as sports because it is a combination of skill and luck not only luck so uske e sports ke bade bade tournaments hote hai jo stadiums mein hazaron log aake dekhte hai jaise koi football ya cricket ya hockey ke match dekhne aate hai waise e sports log dekhne aate hai so you know all these newer mediums are jo hamari industry hai usko expand or expand or expand kar rahe hai Wow, incredible! And uh, does Wrestlingwood also teach uh, the gaming part of it? Yeah, we have a four-year uh, program in gaming, uh, where we have three areas of concentration within that. So there is a game design, uh, there is a three D digital game art, which is the visual elements, wow. and there is uh, uh, programming, right? Coding for games. So uh, all students who are gaming students learn these three things. Uh, so yes, in fact. first gaming used to be a, a component with an animation and then a few years ago we pulled it out and made it a separate four year program wow so it's a whole program eh yeah, you need it i'm telling you pichla jo decade gaya na 2010 se 2020 it was the decade of digital 
Oh. Right, OTT and platforms and all that. The next decade, which is twenty twenty one to twenty thirty or twenty twenty to twenty twenty nine, that is the decade of gaming. Okay. So can I say it is a distant learning also for Wizzling Wood now coming soon? Uh, we already have. So we've started. Uh, we've been doing online classes now for a while for our on-campus students, and we've also launched our own virtual academy. So Wizzling Wood's virtual academy here. Where okay. we started with filmmaking, a uh, foundation of filmmaking online course okay. uh, is is on. It's uh, um, uh, like a one year uh, academy program where uh, you know you have combination of lectures and assignments, mm -hmm. which you learn over one year, and you get a foundation in filmmaking. And there are also smaller components. Some jo apko direction seekna hai, editing seekna hai, screenwriting seekna hai, cinematography seekna hai. The concepts of it, you know. foundation concepts of it yeah. all those are available in, in in smaller modules we are soon uh, looking at launching an online gaming program we are soon looking at launching an online uh, script mentorship program jaise aap idea leke aao and we will mentor you into writing your script online over weekends so that will be launched soon so are you also doing something for this most vulnerable community people jahan pe un logo ke paas paisa nahi hota hai kuch karne ki ichha hoti hai jaise aapne abhi ye online ke bare mein bataya ha so pehli hamari jo pehl thi wo thi na ke jo jo maine bola tha na wo jo wo jo age hai fourth se fourth to eighth wo bahut important age hai because usme aap jitna aap grasp karte ho na aap sab absorb karte ho sponge ke jaise तो जो मुंबई में बीएमसी स्कूल्स है करीबन चार हजार स्कूल है तो आ, हमने बीएमसी से बात करके वो स्कूल का जो टाइम टेबल है उसमें एक पीरियड क्रिएट किया है विच इज फिल्म वॉचिंग देर इज एन ऑफिशियल पीरियड इन द टाइम टेबल ऑफ ऑल फोर थाउजेंड साढ़े तीन हजार राइट फिल्म वॉचिंग सो उसमें क्या है बिकॉज देर आर अट ऑफ फिल्म स्टूडेंट मेक विच आर मेन्ट फॉर चिल्ड्रेन ऑफ दैट एज राइट विच आर मेन्ट फॉर चिल्ड्रेन ऑफ ग्रेड सेवेंथ एट एंड नाइन्थ राइट सो वी हाँ सो वॉट वी डन इज वेन आर स्टूडेंट मेक द फिल्म दे ऑल्सो शूट द बिहाइंड द सीन्स द मेकिंग ऑफ द फिल्म सो दीज आर टेन फिफ्टीन मिनट फिल्म so we show the film to the students and then we show the making of the film so mm -hmm. students understand the kids who are there you know the uh, the a grade 6 7th 8th uh, you know it's, it's 7th standard and 8th standard 6 7 8th standard they understand ki picture banti kaisi hai right agar aap agar aap ye shot liyo ye shot liya kaise hai piche kaise kiya hai director ne actor ko kaise instructions diye hai kahan pe camera placed hai kahan pe lighting lagaya hai kaise fan chalu kiya hai wo hawa udne ke liye right with the with the hair yeah, so yeah, yeah. these things uh, so we do a it's a 15 minute uh, film and a uh, like a 10 to 15 minute behind the scenes that gets played immediately after the film okay. so wo 30 uh, minute ka period hai so that is now wo ye uh, pichle academic year se chalu ho gaya hai mm -hmm. so har hafte ek 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 picture bachcho ko dikhai ja rahi hai so hopefully now we will start to see uh, you know thoda ankur phutenge थोड़ा उनको ग्रास होगा इंटरेस्ट बढ़ेगा जब वो टीवी देखते हैं या फिल्में देखते हैं उनको पता चलेगा कि ये ये शॉट या ये सीन कैसे लिया होगा इसके पीछे क्या होगा यू नो थोड़ा इट विल बी स्टिमुलेटिंग इन देयर हेड सो दिस इज व्हाट वी स्टार्टेड सो वी वी डू एक्चुअली लॉट ऑफ वर्क विथ वी डू लॉट्स ऑफ वर्कशॉप फॉर एनजीओ सलाम बालक ट्रस्ट हो सो मेनी एनजीओ we do one day workshops on different areas uh, animation uh, fashion um covering all the for, uh, mobile film making you know how do you make a film entirely on your mobile uh, we do multiple of these things so every i mean not for the last 3 4 months because everything has been in lockdown but before that literally every two weeks at least once or twice a month koi na koi ngo campus pe hota hai for some workshop or the wow that's incredible um all right so you have also worked in movies like kanchi love express and black and white <laughs> no so that's the <laughs> those are the benefits of those are the benefits of having a a very cool director for a boss so okay. uh, i mean 
हु डजेंट वॉन्ट टू सी देमसेल्व ऑन द बिग स्क्रीन सब सबको खुद को बिग स्क्रीन पे देखना है एक्टिंग आती हो या नहीं आती हो बड़े स्क्रीन पे देखना है एक दो बार तो बस ऐसे मैंने बोल दिया सुभाष जी एक पिक्चर में छोटा रोल दे दो तो देन ही वो ही वाज मेकिंग अ फिल्म वेयर दे वाज दे नीडेड एन इंटरपोल ऑफिसर तो मेरे को इंटरपोल ऑफिसर बना के खड़ा कर दिया ठीक है आई गेस आई डिड वेल एक्चुअली आई मे नॉट हैव डन वेल बिकॉज अगली पिक्चर में मेरे को डिमोट कर दिया बिकॉज इंटरपोल ऑफिसर से सीबीआई ऑफिसर बना दिया तो सो In black and white, I was Interpol officer. In Kanchi, I was CBI officer. So you know, I am telling Subhash ji, क्या काम अच्छा नहीं किया, demote कर दिया. But no, it's fun. Yeah, it's good. I mean, you know, it feels good. Not, I can't act. I can't act. मुझे acting नहीं आती है और मतलब acting सीखने का patience भी नहीं है. But अच्छा लगता है. But what did you learn as an actor? It's very difficult. Yeah. आपको इतनी सारी चीजें देखनी पड़ती है आपको लाइट कहाँ से आ रही है देखनी पड़ती है आपको कैमरा पोजीशनिंग देखनी पड़ती है कैमरा हिल कैसे रहा है आपको कैमरा देखना है नहीं देखना है आपके को एक्टर किधर है वो क्या क्यू देते हैं वो कब क्यू देते हैं आपको वेन डी यू हैव टू रिस्पॉन्ड वे डू हैव टू वॉक फ्रॉम वे डू हैव टू स्टॉप इन कहाँ पे रुक के कहा मूव करके कहा लाइन डिलीवर करनी है कैसे कैमरा को नहीं देखना है बिकॉज नेचुरल टेंडेंसी है कि आप कैमरा को देखो राइट You know how how you don't. There are so many things that you have to think of. It is very difficult. I don't know how actors do it. They deserve some separate whatever, right? How so many things to take. You know, we think that actors are you know kind of dumb people do acting. It's not. It is if you are dumb, you can never be a good actor. So many things you have to take take into account. You have to remember your lines. You have to remember your co-actors' lines. You have to remember your cues. You have to remember the camera movement. You have to remember light. कहाँ से आ रहा है? आपका position कहाँ है? कहाँ से कहाँ? Mark कहाँ है? And you can't look down and walk also. So आपको ध्यान रखना पड़ता है कि अच्छा इधर mark होगा और यहाँ पे मेरे को खड़े रहके ऐसे light catch करके ये line बोलनी है. अरे बहुत complicated है. So I mean I have new respect for actors after uh, after uh, seeing this. They deserve all the fame they get. अरे सारा कुछ है तो huge respect because the काफी बच्चे दूसरे गांव से बॉम्बे आके बस जाते यही सोच के कि मैं भी हीरो बनूंगा जो अच्छी बात है लेकिन हर कोई में नहीं बन सकते but uh, then there are lot of other things. But happen. you know ये भी ना ये so, भी हमारे so, education so, system so, का so, fault है. ये भी हमारे एजुकेशन सिस्टम का फॉल्ट है ऐसे कोई नहीं बोलता है गांव में कि यू नो नो बडी गेट्स ऑन अ ट्रेन फ्रॉम अ गांव कम्स टू मुंबई एंड सेज मैं डॉक्टर बनूंगा या मैं साइंटिस्ट बनूंगा yes, क्योंकि yes. उनको पता है कि डॉक्टर या साइंटिस्ट बनने के लिए बहुत सारी पढ़ाई करनी पड़ती है बट okay. लोगों के दिमाग में ऐसे आ गया है कि एक्टर और फिल्म में जाने के लिए कोई पढ़ाई नहीं करनी पड़ती राइट hmm. right? आप बिस्तर से उठ के एक्टर या डायरेक्टर बन सकते हैं ऐसे नहीं होता है Right? There is a craft to it. There is a technique. There is a craft to it. There is a technique to it. There are things you have to learn. But this Lalit Kalai included in filmmaking. You know what we call creative arts. There are 32 creative arts which are part of what a director or a, a filmmaker's repertoire has to be. Right? You need to understand music. You have to understand scene design. You have to understand color theory. You have to understand dialogue delivery. You have to understand pauses, anticipation. Ye, wo. कोरियोग्राफी अरे बहुत इत, बहुत डिफिकल्ट है मतलब गिवन एन ऑप्शन अगर अगर इफ यू आर इफ आई वाज नॉट सो पैशनेट अबाउट फिल्म एंड दोज एरियाज राइट ऑलमोस्ट एनी अदर करियर इज अजी ऑलमोस्ट एनी अदर एजुकेशन इज यू नो वुड बी इजियर देन देन फिल्म मेकिंग बिकॉज इट्स वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट बट इट्स ऑल्सो वेरी वेरी फुलफिलिंग बिकॉज What you are doing is you are making something from nothing. Hmm. अगर आप uh, uh, medicine में हो, right? या अगर आप engineering में हो, physics में हो, so there is matter. You know whatever you are playing with, you are there is something real that you are doing with your hands and you are creating something from something else. In hmm. film, you are creating something out of nothing. Hmm. Everything in films is fake. Hmm. So one writer sits somewhere and you know thinks of an idea. and kind of fresh flashes it out another bunch of people get together director ye wo dop actors blah blah aur usko pura fake mein fake stage karte hain sab fake hi hota hai shooting mein sab kuch fake hota hai fake karke stage karte hain aur aise ek picture banate hain do teen ghante ki aur hazaron lakhon log usko paise deke dekhte hain ki kitna difficult cheez hai karne mein 
और कितनी पैशन और कितनी क्रिएटिविटी और कितनी यू नो डीप अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ ह्यूमन साइकोलॉजी एंड माइंड इज नीडेड इन ऑर्डर टू टू क्रिएट समथिंग फ्रॉम नथिंग राइट हमारी इंडस्ट्री में टू प्लस टू फोर नहीं होता है टू प्लस टू फाइव होता है इंफिनिटी भी हो सकता है जीरो भी हो सकता है राइट सो इट्स 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 एन इनक्रेडिबली फुलफिलिंग बट इट्स ऑल्सो वेरी डिफिकल्ट every industry has their own challenges yeah yeah all right so thank you chaitanya ji for your wonderful inputs indeed it was a very very insightful session we had truly truly inspiring i have i have personally learned a lot about it now moving on to a little fun part of it let's start with, let's begin with a rapid fire who inspires okay. you the most? sure yeah so who inspires you the most uh so i used to box when i was in uh, school a little bit in college so mohammad ali all right and what's the greatest risk you have ever taken um so i started my career with a, a very very large consulting uh, firm called arthur anderson and associates jo aaj kpmg hai wagaira wagaira the big boys right anderson was big so i quit my uh, very very high paying and you know kind of very very high profile job in arthur anderson because i did not enjoy it and i quit it despite not having another job and i said you know i'll figure it out ye nahi karna hai i is life mein kuch to kar lunga main but ye nahi karna hai kya hai quit that was a big risk that is indeed a big risk <laughs> yeah yeah and what is the most memorable moment of your life uh professional life i think it would be when uh, you know when we when the when we saw the first kind of when every alumni of whistling words and every student that you have taught when they go on and achieve something big every moment is memorable professionally right so that the the success of your students gives you the most the best memories possible Absolutely. personally it would have to be when i got married okay so i'm sure ye aap pehle bante ho jo kaise married ke time <laughs> ah, no, no, I am very happy. No, 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 Uh, actually, everything is my hobby, and my my work is my hobby. Every I mean, it doesn't feel like work because you know you enjoy it. So, yeah, I mean, I read quite a lot. I write. I watch a lot of content. Um, uh, thoda cricket, thoda volleyball, khela hai, thoda chess khela hai. Life me, uh, thodi boxing ki hai. Um, yeah, but I mean, films. I think films is a big part of. a huge hobby of mine which is now also become my profession all right that i can see and feel it as well <laughs> i'm getting the vibes right. and the, yeah and the very last question if you were to be a prime minister for a day what is the first thing you would do actually uh, uh, most of it has already been done in the education bit mm. so i would uh, tweak it a little bit more and make it a little more uh, You, you know, a little more twenty first, a little more that the, I, I would fill some of those gaps that I uh, think uh, are still there. That I would do that first, and I would definitely put uh, uh, film and creative arts. Uh, uh, you know, as a as a, I would make it a big uh, international foreign relations uh, India brand thrust issue, because um, you know the. Uh, the the biggest export of of us is arms the mm. second biggest export of us is content is entertainment content mm. right so it needs to be that for india as well we should be taking our content out to the world and you know there is there has to be some way that we can do that so i would make education and uh, film entertainment those are my two 
priority items wonderful but we are i think we are already global uh we can we are global in geography we are not global yet in diaspora very few non indians watch and consume a lot of indian uh, origin content there are very few films ikka dukka matlab you can count the films like lunchbox hai dangal hai um you know court hai aise thodi 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 10 15 meera nair ki picture hai shekhar kapoor ki picture hai jo indian soul hote hue bhi duniya ke liye banayi gayi hai to these are the films that are the exception which is why they stand out yes right so for us there should be more and more and more films like that thank god kai to start hua hai nahi hoga shuru hua eventually it will happen yeah in the next 10 years or so uh we should uh, we should make more of an impact on the world i'm sure i'm sure and having uh, people like you who are so passionate about it will take it to, to another new heights well thank you so much for a social tables for our platform sorry a message for social tables for our platform oh uh great this is a a, a lovely platform and a great uh, q and a series that you are doing and you know continue to do more hopefully uh, lots of new ideas will come out of it and hopefully lots of people will learn about a lot of different different things thank you so much uh, chetanya thank you bye All So no, I still have one question for you. Oh, know. sorry. Okay. I also have a vote of thanks to give you. Ah. So yeah. So that was an amazing response. So before we conclude, a few word of wisdom or advice you would like to give to our audience. Ah, huh. uh, we. I mean, I'm not really that wise or whatever to give words of wisdom. But uh, yeah, I mean, just do what you love. uh don't do anything that you have to do do things that you want to do and you know eventually success will come jo jo acha lagta hai wo karo and you know success aayega i'm sure and what would you want to say for those because ye film ka hai so i would want to extend one more question what would you say for those youth jo aise hi bhag ke aa jate unke liye kya message hai padhai karo study study good very good बुक्स पढ़ो प्लीज रीड बुक्स ऑल राइट वेल दैट्स इट फॉर टुडे थैंक यू सो मच लेट मी टेक एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू गिव यू अ वोट ऑफ थैंक्स इट्स अ ग्रेट हॉनर एंड प्रिविलेज टू प्रपोज वोट ऑफ थैंक्स टू मिस्टर चैतन्य जी हु डिस्पाइट हिज बिजी शेड्यूल हैज फाउंड टाइम टू ग्रेस हिज स्पेशल इंटरेक्शन विद अस वी आर एक्सट्रीमली ग्रेटफुल टू यू फॉर शेयरिंग योर वर्ड्स ऑफ एनकरेजमेंट एंड गिविंग अस वैल्यूएबल इनपुट्स your eminent presence has indeed made this interaction a memorable one and we unite to thank you from bottom of our heart for your kindness interest and support we wish you all the very best for your future endeavors all the best stay safe thank you so much thank you for having me bye thank you bye